In this video, we're going to take a look at the Young Again Institute site, and I'm going to show you how to do the main things on your site. So to log into the back end, you'll go to your URL slash WP admin, and it'll take you here where you, where you will plug in your username and password that we've given you, and then you're logged in. So I'm going to go down the list of the items in this left hand column here in the black and just go through each one of these that is used on your site. So first is updates. Under updates you'll see where you have all of these plugins that we use to create your site and these themes. If you just select all and select update plugins it'll update those for you. We regularly update all of our plugins and themes on our websites. We go through your uh, any website that we host, we go through regularly and check and make sure that it's working properly and we up update those for you. So if you never want to do this or worry about this, then you don't have to. And that's totally fine. So we'll move on to posts. And this is where you would have your blogs. So if you just click on one that's already there, you can edit what is already in there if you'd like so I can edit anything in here and I can replace this featured image if I'd li like to I can add a new one or change anything that I want on there so let's say you want to add a new post so basically you click add new you can click add new from there or like I did at the top and then you would enter the title here and you would enter the copy right here and you can change the size of your text. You can bold, italicize, bullet, numbered list. You can adjust anything there. You can add a hyperlink to an outside website if you'd like. And you can do any of that like you would with uh, normal word processing. So you'll want to select a blog here so that it shows up in the right place and then you'll set, select set featured image and you'll upload whatever file you can drag it or click select file and then you'll select it and say set featured image and it'll show up there at the top and you'll click publish or you can save it as a draft if you'd like. And it's just going to automatically show up in you on the page where you have your blog so you won't have to do anything once you hit publish it'll just show up there so you can let us know if you have any additional questions about that but it's pretty pretty simple pretty easy so we'll move on to media media is where all of your pictures any pdfs or right now it's just images in your logo that's where all this is located so you can see what you have here you can add new media items from here anything like that but anytime you'll need to access your media library you'll be able to do that like I was just doing on the blog it'll be there so you won't have to come to the media library ever if you don't need to but it's just a simple way if you wanted to upload a bunch of pictures at once you could click add new and do it that way whatever but that just kind of shows you that's where it is so we'll move on to forms so you have three forms here so let's take a look at what's in here. Pretty simple. Name, email, subject, and message. So if I want to add new fields to a form, they're all already over here. So I would just select what I wanted. So if you just select a single line text, then it's going to show up like this. And I would just change the field label to say whatever I wanted. I can make it a required field if I like. I can duplicate it here. And then I can drag it wherever I want, or I can delete it, just like that. And then you'll always click Update Form. And let's look at the other ones and make sure that they're also pretty simple and make sure you Yeah, these are all pretty simple. I don't think there's anything difficult in, in these. But if you ever need to create a new form, you 
you can um, create, go to forms and click add new and then just start selecting items over there from the right hand side. Then the other thing you'll want to know is under settings, under notifications. So this is set up to go to the admin email. So you would need to um, change this if you want. So right now this is the email it's going to. And if you ever want to make this a, n a new email, that's where you would change it. So just wherever it says sherry at youngintoday.com, that's, that's where you'll change the email or you can duplicate this notification and then change it so that you can have this form be submitted to two different people. And then you can delete it if you don't need it. So that's how you would change the notification. So if you need to change the notification or a, add an additional one, that's how you would do that. And then I'll show you once we get to pages how you would add a form to a page. So we'll move on to pages now. And this is where you have about us and you have get started. So let's look at the get started page right here. So you've got the main heading for this page is right here. And then I've got these in this second header is in heading two and then heading three. So it gets smaller as you go down. And then I've got some words here about taking the next step. And then you've got this short code for the form. And that was added by just wherever my cursor is, I click add form and then I select whichever form I want to use. And then I don't want to display the title or description of the form and I just want to insert the form. And you can see that it would be right there. But we don't want to make any changes. And the reason that this page has two forms on it is because you've created a page for this symptoms and you can say what kind of symptoms and start your consultation. And then this is just in on every page. Taking the next step is on every page. And so then it has the, the subject and message. And that's just the form that's on your contact us page and on every page at the bottom. So as along with that map. So that one's not on this page because it's it's added through some other stuff that I'll show you it's in the footer so this works just like the blog posts you put a give title for your page and then put your text here and you can edit it however you'd like and then some of your pages have a featured image so I think some of these have a yeah so there's a featured image up there and that's added in the same place as the blog set featured image and so your get started page doesn't have one which totally looks fine that way but if you ever want to add a new page for anything then you can add that featured image if you'd like so yeah if you wanted to add a new page you would just click add new and start adding things and then I'll show you how to add a page to the menu so if you do end up doing that so comments is for uh, your blog. We won't really talk anything about that right now. Homepage areas. This is what creates, as you could assume, the areas of your homepage. And you've got these different sections here and I'll show you how it works. So the first one is a slider and I'll show you how Revolution Slider works a little bit further down, but right now it just has short code for the slider. And then under that is about us. And that's this section here. And so we've got a nice, we've got pictures here and then a blank like white space along next with another colored space so that it just looks nice and neat like that. So this is just works basically like the blog and page sections is it works the same way. So it has all the same buttons. And so if you want the heading to appear like this, you'll need to set it as header one. And then we just have everything centered 
on these sections so that it looks nice on the home page. And then this learn more button is hyperlinked. So how you hyperlink something is you just highlight it and click hyperlink and then paste or copy copy or paste or type in the URL that you want and click apply. And so that's how that was made. And then it's also formatted as a button. And you just want to make sure that it's, that button is highlighted. And that's why it looks like this instead of just like words. So it looks like a button. And so then this section is done basically the same way. This stem cell therapy section is done the same way. So if you'll scroll down, you see that padding is checked, yes, but nothing else is really done down here. So then we'll look at the stem cell therapy section. And in this section, see all the all of this is done exactly the same way. It's centered. And then this is linked and formatted as a button. But everything is everything on this page is white text so that it shows up as white text. And then if you scroll down, there's a background image and then there's a background color over the top and then you can adjust how transparent or opaque that color is. And it tells you right here how that works. Padding is always checked yes. And yeah, so if you ever wanna change the text down here, that's where you would do that and just click update. If you want to reorder these sections, you can do that here. But because you have these set as half sections, you'll probably never want to reorder those. And those are done through, so for these sections done the same way, this one would be just white and centered, and then this one has just a color in the background, no photo, just a color. And then that's set as white text. And This is set at half pod, yes, and then half pod height is at 540. And so then you'll look at the next one is going to be the exact same. Half pod, yes, half pod height is set at 540. And this half pod height, they have to be exactly the same on each or it won't show up right. So if you ever wanted to add a new section, what you would do is click add new. Give it a title, whatever you want can go here. So what you'll wanna do is center that. I'm gonna make this. Heading one, make this a hyperlink, format it as a button. I'm going to make this all white text. Scroll down here, put a picture in the background. Adding yes and that's all I'm gonna do here and I'm gonna say publish then I'm gonna go to reorder so we'll look at it here and it's probably gonna show up in the wrong place so yeah it just showed up there underneath the slider but you can see that's how it works and now I'm gonna move it to the trash because we don't want it and if I ever wanted to get it back, it's in the trash right here. You can restore it or delete it permanently. And so I'll refresh so that this looks nice and good and right. So that's how you make the homepage areas. We'll move on. I don't think we're using this staff members. No, we're not using the pods for staff members. Genesis is the theme used to create your website won't look at anything here. Under appearance, we want to look at two things, widgets and menus. So we'll start with widgets. This is where the stuff in your header and footer are located. So we'll look at header. You have your image, which is the logo. And you have a custom menu, 
which is this right here. Before header, you also have a custom menu, which is the social media menu and the address and phone number. So if you ever need to change what's right here, if you get a new address or the phone number changes, that's where that's located and you can change it right there and that's hyperlinked. You can see how it's hyperlinked. And this just allows us to have those homepage areas. And then in the footer is the take the next step box with the form. So if you ever want to change the wording here, that's where that's located. And then the form is right there. And again, you can get the short code for the form. You can copy it and paste it from somewhere else. Or if it doesn't have it right here. Yeah, you could just copy and paste it. You can find the short code for the form by going back to forms. And you can change any of the text there that you'd like. And under that is your map plugin. And this information here. So if you ever need to change that, that's where that's located. And then we have that image there. And if you change out anything other than just typing issues, then it might change some of the formatting on your site and might not make it look as good. So if you do end up changing things in the footer, you might need some help. And then the social media menus down there again. So let's move on to menus. And in the social media menu, you can see there's some code here. So how I would add a new one is by clicking on custom link and I'd put the URL here. And then what you want to do is just copy what's in this navigation label and put it here and then just type in what and replace the word Facebook with whatever social media you're using. So you can see it's the same thing. Google Plus, YouTube, Yelp. So you'll just want to replace what the word and then add the URL. And then these can be dragged wherever you want them to go. And then you click save when you're done. And then under the pages menu, so this is how the main menu is set up. And <clears throat> this is done. So it, let's say you added a new page. It's going to show up over here. So it'll show up and you just select it and click add to menu and it'll show up down at the bottom and then you can drag it and put it wherever you want and then you can also make it a sub menu item if you'd like and then if you decide you don't want it just remove it and so that's how these are all set up the home page is set up just as a custom link to the website and then the rest of these are pages and then this one doesn't link anywhere it's just a header. So, and then that's how those are, <clears throat> yeah, so those are just set as, that one's just set as a header so that it doesn't link anywhere, but then obviously these other ones that say page link to their specific page, and if you make any changes, you'll just click save menu, and you can drag and rearrange them however you want. Moving on, plugins, we already talked about those and how to update them. So you can look at those. You can add new if you want, but you might need some help with that along the way. So if you end up wanting to add plugins, run into some trouble, let us know. Under users, this is where your login for an admin if I wanted to make an admin login would be and then you can change your password here tool settings custom fields SEO I'm not gonna go over anything there I don't think there's anything in particular you need to know there SEO or yeah I already said that and duplicator we use to launch your site don't need to worry about anything there slider revolution is the next thing we'll talk about and on your slider, you have a static layer, so that just means this layer stays the same through each site. Or, sorry, each slide. That's what I meant to say. And we'll look at it. 
and if you ever wanted to change out these pictures all you'd have to do is click on it so that you're on that particular slide and then go to media library and switch out which picture you wanted and hit insert you can then change how the if the picture if you want it to change the how it's aligned so it can scoot it over or up and down and then let's look at the static layer so you can see this is what goes on top of everything here so I'm going to show it on this slide so that we can see it so this is what it looks like on that slide so if you want to change what this says just double click on it and it comes up and click the green arrow when you have changed it to say what you want and then this has a link to scroll below slider when you click on it so if you end up wanting to change that you just want to make sure everything fits within the bounds of these different screen sizes make sure that it looks good you can change the size of the text you can change the font you can change the color you can also change the animation down here this is how long it takes for the item to get into place and you can change what type of animation is on it you can move those around you can drag them and you can play around with that if you'd like obviously it looks really good the way it is but that's just to kind of get you started if you do want to change it. If you end up messing it up, need some help with it, let us know. But those are the main things, I think, if you just ever wanted to change some of the wording out on there. So let's look at Google Maps. And manage locations. And that's where you have your location right there. If I need to edit it, I just would click that there. And you can change the address. And then these will probably auto populate if you type in a valid address and then under manage maps you would just come in here and let's say you created a new location it would be located here and you just select it so if you want to add a new location let's say you add a second office you'd enter in the title here so you'd say you know different city office or different location you type in the address this would auto populate and then say save location and then like I said under manage maps it'll show up and then you just select it and then you'd have a on your map both locations would be there and then under uh, we're looking at manage maps right now and if you want to change the size of your map the zoom level of your map that'll just change how it looks down here so you'll just want to be careful and make sure it doesn't look wrong but if you do end up changing it and if you do end up wanting to zoom out further so that you can see both locations if you end up adding another location something like that then that's done through zoom level and then that map was added through again you just got the managed maps let's look at that the short code is right here if you want to add it somewhere and then that's pretty much everything here on the site so if you end up with questions about your site that weren't addressed in this video let us know but that should get you a good start and help you as you edit things and make changes